Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your daily analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading session dated Wednesday the 25th of July. I'm recording this video nearly 25 past 5 in the afternoon New York time on the 25th. Here's our daily chart for the S&P. We have a 5 down, a double 3 up, now most likely complete. We have a full daily candlestick now below this parallel channel and not touching the lower trend line. So with this very conservatively drawn channel, we now do have technically a trend channel breach. So I'm going to move the invalidation point down to here within wave 3 black, which should now have begun. No second wave correction may make a new high beyond the start of its first wave. This wave count is invalidated with movement above 1380.39. To the downside, wave 3 black, if it's begun here, will reach 1.618, the length of wave 1 black, at 1129. That target should be probably a couple of months away, and the long-term target for primary wave C still months away yet. If you want to be very conservative, you might like to wait for a little bit more downwards movement. Movement below 1325.41, that's the low labelled B pink here, would eliminate any possible large diagonal structure for wave C pink. So movement below that point would give quite a lot of confidence in this wave count. Let's have a look at recent movement on the hourly chart, where the high for two black up here is this point up here. I have, sorry, let's start with the main hourly chart. I have two hourly charts today for you. This is the main hourly wave count and I have an alternate. At this stage, I have to say, they really do have about an even probability. For this main wave count, it is possible that we have had a very brief shallow zigzag correction for wave two green, just below the 0.382 Fibonacci ratio of wave one green. So far we have a 5, 3, 5 and I've checked the subdivisions here on the 5 and 1 minute charts and particularly the end of the C wave, it all subdivides absolutely perfectly into a 5 wave structure. So this is a zigzag with a very slightly truncated C wave which is probably over here. So if this is wave 2 green in its entirety, the correction could have been quite brief and shallow and we may be starting on a third wave down in tomorrow's session. At 1261, wave 3 green will reach 1.618, the length of wave 1 green. Within 3 green, no second wave correction may make a new high beyond the start of its first wave. This wave count is invalidated with any movement above 1343.77. However, if we simply move the degree of labelling here down one degree, then we may have only seen wave A within wave 2 green complete, or wave W if 2 green is going to be a double. So this wave count has about an even probability it would see wave 2 green probably being more in proportion in terms of duration to its counterpart first wave that it's correct in. So if 2 green is going to be a flat correction, then A should subdivide to a 3, B should be at least 90% the length of A, that's achieved at 1331, and when that's done, we'd expect to see wave upwards. When I know where B has ended, then I can calculate a target upwards for you for C. We would use these Fibonacci ratios and the 50% guide as likely places for upwards movement to end. This wave count would be confirmed with movement above 1343.77 because at that stage the main hourly wave count would be invalidated. So this one's expecting also downwards movement at least to start tomorrow's session. This one though expects a B wave which must subdivide as a 3 or if it's WXY then the X wave also has to subdivide as a 3. So this alternate expects choppy overlapping downwards movement to subdivide as a 3 wave structure, pretty likely to reach below 1331. For a flat correction, wave B may make a new low below the start of A, 
so that's why there is no lower invalidation point, which means, unfortunately, there is no lower price point which differentiates these two wave counts. The only way we're going to tell the difference is the structure of this downwards movement. The main hourly wave count needs to see a 5 down, and this alternate needs to see a 3 down. So tomorrow I am expecting downwards movement. The structure of that downwards movement has to be analysed really carefully. If it's a 3, our alternate hourly wave count may be correct, and the correction for 2 green is not over. If it's a 5, the main hourly wave count may be correct, and we should be looking at the start of a third wave down. That's all for me today with your SMP analysis, and I hope that members are all having a most awesome day.